name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, we celebrate this great feast of divine mercy, a great gift of God's love. And says so we, we begin the celebration of this Mass acknowledging the fact that we are in need of his love and his mercy. So let us acknowledge our sins at this time and pray for that mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners from darkness into light, Christe eleison. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread 
and to the prayers. All came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoy favor with all the people. And every day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is ever. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord hath this been done. It is wonderful we Eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, 
so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Knock, knock, knock. Not who's there. It's not a joke. 
knocking at the door. What do you do when someone knocks at your door? Perhaps if you're like many people during this uh, coronavirus sheltering in place, you're probably thinking, oh boy, who is it? Or should I open the door? Or what do I look like? Especially with barber shops and salons closed and everything. I saw a recent joke on, on the internet saying with all the shops closed, it's going to get really ugly out there. So um, we really appreciate the barbers and the, shop and the salons and when, when we have them now. Uh, but no, what, what do we do when we, uh, when we hear the knock? We, we know that we should respond to, to answer and to open the door. In a sense, this is what we celebrate today, the Feast of the Divine Mercy. Jesus is standing at the door knocking. From the book of Revelation, we hear chapter 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone will let me in, I will come in and dine with them. Many of you have probably seen the beautiful image of, his, of a picture, a painting of Jesus standing at a door knocking. If you've noticed that picture, there's no, there's no handle on that side of the door, on the outside. And so, uh, in a sense, it's obvious that it has to be open from the inside. That's the door of our hearts, brothers and sisters. Jesus is standing at the door of our hearts, seeking entry. And this divine mercy feast, this message, this time, is for us to open up the door of our hearts, to let him in. We have to think about Christ's second coming in regards to him standing at the door knocking and, and wanting in. Since this whole period of being at home and, and having the doors closed and being sheltering in place, in some sense kind of fits in well with this whole idea that, that we should be ready for Christ's second coming. Uh, we should be ready for him to uh, appear in a sense to enter in, to open up uh, uh, in a sense in our lives. This Feast of the Divine Mercy fits in well with this idea because St. Faustina had received that message from, from Jesus about 80 years ago, and, and uh, we celebrate, we've been celebrating this feast for about 20 years. It was on April 30th in 2000 when I was a deacon that St. John Paul II initiated this feast as Divine Mercy Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter. And Jesus had told Faustina this feast is a sign for the end time. After it will come the day of justice. You will prepare the world for my final coming. Those are numbers 848 and 429 in, in the beautiful uh, Divine Mercy um, diary that St. Faustina had, had written. Are we afraid of Jesus coming? Are we afraid of him knocking on the door in a sense uh, meeting us where we're at? right now in this very moment. This pandemic is, a, is, I think, in many ways, God's way of waking us up, getting us to stop in the sense of our everyday routines, having, in a sense, kind of like a little retreat to stop and realize, am I ready? Am I ready for Christ's coming at this moment? Now, if you're like us when we were ornery little children and we were doing something we shouldn't have been doing behind a locked door or closed door in our bedroom and my mom would come and knock on the door we would oh boy we're going to get in trouble and we would fear that it's the same way with us if we're doing things we shouldn't be doing we we may be afraid but we shouldn't be afraid we shouldn't in a sense be involved in anything that would cause us to uh, fear the lord's coming this is why this Feast of Divine Mercy fits well with the Sacrament of, of Confession, which we hear in this uh, 20th chapter of St. John, where he comes and he breathes on the, on the apostles, receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, whose sins you retain are retained. He gives the beautiful Sacrament of Confession on this Feast of Divine Mercy. It's a way to... Give them the gift of mercy to extend into the church. And for 2,000 years, this has been taking place. We don't have the sacrament of the Eucharist available for the people, but the sacrament of confession or reconciliation has still been available, accessible, an opportunity to give of our sins, to ask for the Lord's mercy and peace. And very much connected with this idea of mercy, how the Lord comes and stands there wanting to give us his mercy to shine the light into our hearts is peace. There's so much talk of fear 
in today's world and society and many, many people's hearts, fear of getting the coronavirus or fear of the, the financial times uh, that are taking place now or in the future. And this is why Jesus says three times in today's gospel, peace, peace be with you. You know, when he comes in, in the presence of the apostles, what, what did they think? Some of them were, were probably, well, first, first of all, they were very afraid. They still had the fear in their hearts. We know this because on Easter Sunday, at the very beginning of the gospel, Jesus comes and stands in their, in their midst. They were hiding behind locked doors, it says, because of fear of the Jews. Because they thought the same thing was going to happen to them. They were going to be crucified or, or, or cast into prison like Jesus. So they were naturally afraid. But notice it says Thomas wasn't there, but he was there a following week or eight days later. And Jesus came and stood in their midst again. He came and stood in their midst even though they were still behind locked doors. Even though they saw him on Easter Sunday, they still were hiding in fear and isolation. And probably a little bit still ashamed of how they had, in a sense, not followed Christ. St. Peter had denied that he even knew Jesus three times. Um, and so they were afraid. Perhaps they were thought, thinking, when uh, um, having known that Jesus had risen, and that maybe, he, maybe he's going he's to um, scold them, or he's going to correct them, or whatever. So the first things out of his mouth were, he said, peace, peace be with you. He want, wanted them to have peace in their hearts, to know that he didn't hold it against them. In the same way, this outpouring of God's mercy comes down upon us as well. Um, this whole idea of divine justice coming in the future, we, we hope it does. We hope that the Lord comes and fixes all the, the messes that exist in our world. But the Lord really doesn't want us to focus or be afraid on, uh, about that. He wants us to open our hearts to his mercy. The floodgates of mercy are available. He loves us so much. This is what the Lord came to give us, is mercy. And think about St. Thomas, who doubted Jesus' resurrection, thinking, oh, it's probably just a, a ghost. You know, this is probably what went through his mind. You didn't really see him. Jesus says, Thomas, put your finger into the holes in my hand. Put your hand into the big gash in my side. It's not some new body. It's the original body that had been crucified. And behold, he stood among them. He stood among the apostles as a beacon of light, like this beautiful pillar of fire, this Easter candle to remind us that Jesus did rise from the dead. And he says, peace be with you. Love lives and can no longer die. Mercy has come among us. How many have accepted the gift of his mercy? How many have gone to confession in the sacrament of reconciliation and felt that peace? Beautiful transformation. We priests have such a tremendous privilege to experience this to be able to extend this peace and this mercy that Jesus gave on Divine Mercy Sunday. I love this image. I love this feast. Who, would, who wouldn't? But especially in my own priesthood, my own life, when I was a priest at St. Patrick, years ago, I came in contact with the Feast of Mercy in a special way, reading through the diary and becoming, in a sense, a special friend of St. Uh, Faustina and coming to really just appreciate a little bit of a transformation in my priesthood uh, through this message of mercy. So, I love this feast, and I hope you do too. It is such a beautiful gift, a transformation, that the Lord has come to establish his mercy and his peace among us. How do we live this? How do we, in a sense, allow this mercy to touch our hearts? Again, go to confession. And it's as easy as I think ABC. You've probably heard this before. But first of all, accept God's mercy. A, accept God's mercy. Accept the gift of sacrament of reconciliation. Second of all, B, be merciful. Jesus says it doesn't do any good in a sense to, uh, to confess your sins but then treat others with, with anger, with hatred and, and not be loving towards your neighbor. So be merciful. It's equally as important. Reconcile with your enemies. Call those people who perhaps have been distanced from you. And then see, completely trust. Jesus, I trust in you. In every single image of the divine mercy, there's supposed to be those words, Jesus, I trust in you. He said this in two or three lo locations in the, in the divine mercy diary. Why? He wanted us to remember. He wanted us to never forget to trust in his mercy. 
And so as we celebrate this Feast of Mercy, perhaps I would like you to uh, pray with me um, some, a little bit of a prayer in front of the image at this time. image of the mercy of Christ, the mercy that poured forth from his side on the cross, the blood and water which gushed forth from the, from, the, from the heart of Jesus coming through that lance wound in the side of his, his, his body, the blood and the water, the gift of the Eucharist and baptism, the nourishment and the forgiveness of sins through baptism and, and confession. Jesus, we trust in you. Jesus, light of the world, illumine my mind and heart to believe in your resurrection. Enlighten my faith to know of your immense love for me. Help me to trust in your mercy, to be an instrument of mercy for everyone I meet, and for that mercy to shower down upon me constantly until I embrace you in heaven. Give me the grace to believe that I am a beloved child of your Father in heaven and that I am called to leave sin behind. Jesus, have mercy on my soul now and especially at the moment of my death. And I lift up to you at this time all of those poor sinners of my family or friends, those who have left the faith or do not trust in your mercy. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. Amen. Alleluia. profess our faith at this time. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our salvation, Pontius Pilate, suffered, died, and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and worshipped and spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Conscious of God's God the Father's presence with us at this time, let us now present these petitions with our hearts and minds open to his mercy and his favor. for the spiritual and physical well-being of the Vicar of Christ, holding the keys of St. Peter, Pope Francis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us lift up our prayers for Bishop Kimmy, Father Jerome, and all the priests of our diocese. May the Holy Spirit enlighten them with their angels and the angels protect them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are away from the church, on this Divine Mercy Sunday, may they be hungry for the mercy that God wants to give them. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. May we have the courage to give assistance to the health of the poor. And for all those involved in mission territories who work hard 
annually to provide for others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray also for those who suffer the consequences of the current pandemic, that God the Father may grant health to the sick, strength to those who care for them, comfort to families, and salvation to all the victims who have died. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our family members, friends, and members of our parish who have died, may the King of mercy usher them quickly to the heaven and kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray in a special way for Luis and Lilia Puntello, for whom this Mass has been offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, help us to truly trust in your Son, Jesus. Help us to not be afraid, but to be courageous. And may that courage be built upon Jesus' love for us, his desire for us to receive his mercy. And we ask this in all of these prayers, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord yes. accept your sacrifice and your faith. For the praise, the praise and glory of his name. For our good and all of this holy church. church. Accept, O oh Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us 
us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this, e on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Carl, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give new birth of water in the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, 
he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once who were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some of your fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, when John, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Bernabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. You may offer to one another a sign of peace in your homes at this time. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please pray with me in the spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present. I believe that you are present. In the most holy sacrament. In the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment since, Since I, I cannot, cannot have this moment, receive you sacramentally. Receive, receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. Come, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you. I embrace, I embrace you as if you were already there. As if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never, Never permit, permit me, me to be separated, separated from, from you. you. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. There have been a lot of um, home blessings, especially maybe to the north if you've been watching the news and so forth. So. Um, I, we have a lot, I have a lot of these 8x10 pictures of divine mercy um, in the office. And so if you want us, one of us to, to, to bless one and to bring it to your home, um, these guys don't know about this, but uh, just send us an email, send us a message, and, and we'll, we'll drop one off. Um, and, and that will be kind of like a little blessing for your home. So well, it's a shame to have these in the office and just sitting there in a pile when, when people uh, would like to have them in their homes. It, it's not... Uh, it's not some type of a, 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 uh, a way of, of um, it's not just putting it, you know, in your door or whatever and just kind of leaving it there. It's a matter of really allowing Jesus to enter into your heart and, and open to the divine mercy. So I invite you to look at divinemercy.org. There's a lot of wonderful things on uh, the internet as well as formed.org regarding divine mercy. It's a beautiful story. And try to take time to learn how to pray the divine mercy chaplet. It's a beautiful uh, thing to do. Just a reminder, maybe you got the message about the outdoor service. We were going to have a little blessing opportunity with the Eucharist outside and confession. That's been canceled, so we're not having an outdoor uh, service um, just to make sure that it's in, it's in um, compliance with what uh, the state and the diocese want, just to not have gatherings. Even if it's outside, it's kind of precarious. So we're just going to, we have a, a service that we'll have uploaded by 3 p.m., uh, that you can watch uh, online so uh, with adoration. So please take time to do that. So The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Hallelujah. 
Be away. 